Hello, I'm Jay Reese, and I'm a docent at the Norton Museum of Art. As part of the museum's Norton from Home series, I want to introduce you to a painting by a remarkable artist who spent his career depicting what he perceived as a lost Eden. This is a work by Charles Marion Russell, also known as C.M. Russell. Here, we see a group of Native Americans on horseback, gathered in a rugged landscape. Several, including a woman with a baby on her back, are catching up with a group. Some are shielding their eyes as they look beyond us to search the horizon. The most prominent figure is a woman standing on her white horse with her arms raised to hold a blanket that protects her from the sun. She seems ready to embrace the sky. At the bottom of the painting, there are several dogs and a small pony. What else catches our eye? Well, the group is on the edge of what appears to be a canyon. We're not sure where they are headed or where they've come from, but they've gone as far as they can go. Russell often used geographic features like this to compress the action. We also see things critical to this artist's vision of the West, the raw, sprawling expanse of land and the vast sky across the upper third of the painting. This is big sky country before the term was invented. This painting is part of the museum's American collection and is called In the Wake of the Hunters. Russell, who was known as the cowboy artist, painted it in 1896. Russell was self-taught. He was also an illustrator, sculptor, storyteller, and author. He was born in 1864 in St. Louis. He rode horses as a youngster and grew up reading tales of buffalo herds, Native Americans, and the rugged cowboy life on America's western frontier. The young Russell drew and created sculptures from clay and found objects. But he was a poor student who struggled with a learning disorder that hampered his ability to spell, punctuate, and write legibly. Yet he was adventurous and in 1880, when he turned 16, his family allowed him to move west. He discovered that the west he had read about and dreamed about no longer existed. The buffalo had been hunted to near extinction. Much of the land had been fenced in, and cowboys no longer herded cattle across open stretches of the range. After a brief stint on a sheep ranch, Russell spent 11 years working as a cowboy in Montana and Alberta, Canada. During that time, he entertained himself and his cowboy cronies with his drawings of Western life. In 1893, he quit the grueling cowboy life to focus on an art career. It was slow going. Over the next few years, he mostly sold paintings to saloons and hotels and some illustrations to magazines. He married Nancy Cooper in 1896, the same year he painted In the Wake of the Hunters, and she gave his life structure and aggressively promoted his career. Let's look again at our painting, especially the woman at the center. Standing atop of her horse, she's elevated above the landscape in an almost heroic, monumental pose. Is she looking for men to return from a hunt? Looking at her people's past glories? Looking for the latest intrusion on their life by white settlers? She's looking into the sun. Is it setting? If we think so, is Russell thinking about the fate of the Native American culture? The woman is on a white horse, a symbol of strength and freedom. The white horse also helps focus us on her and the center of the painting. Russell often placed animals in the foreground to provide action and give proportion to his human subjects. So how did Russell view Native Americans who were such frequent subjects of his artwork? He certainly understood their plight. He once wrote that the Native American was, quote, the only real American. He fought and died for his country. Today, he has no vote, no country, and is not a citizen. But history will not forget him. But no matter how well-intentioned he may have been, Russell's portrayals may be problematic for some viewers today. While his paintings were sympathetic, in some of his stories, letters to friends, and even in the titles to a few pictures, he used terms and descriptions for Native Americans that would be unacceptable now. Historians have described the past as a foreign country. We should have open minds when we visit it. We should be ready to learn and view it in the context of the times and not judge. With that in mind, I often wonder how history will judge us. And this brings me to an important question. Russell was a white man who painted scenes of Native Americans. Can artists, should artists, depict cultures and, 
experiences not their own. I certainly don't have an answer, but it's a debate worth having. In his way, Russell was a historian of the Old West. He died in 1926. Russell lived to see a world transformed by technology, a world war, and a revolution in art that included Cubism, Falvism, and Dada. But his life and art were devoted to celebrating and mourning the lost world of Native Americans, cowboys, and open spaces. He said, quote, the West is dead. You may lose a sweetheart, but you won't forget her. Thank you for watching. I hope you will come visit this important painting soon at the Norton Museum of Art.